Good morning, afternoon, evening everyone and welcome to the final match of the day, week 10 of the tour. This is it, we've, uh, we've made it to the final, we've made it to the end, we've just got one more round of matches left to play and that is it. Uh, the tour ends and we'll have our winner. So, um, where do I begin really? I don't have an updated league standards from week nine, so um, we'll we'll skip that and leave it till the to the end of the video with the the complete uh, league table after this round of matches. So I suppose I can get into the fixtures and then the running order and take it from there. So let's start off with the fixtures. Th yeah, fixtures this week. First of all, you've got Hoyle versus Min, Louis versus Hollick, Rick versus JJ, Joe versus Declan, and Jerky versus Rue. So, some interesting matchups there in the final round of the tour. You've got uh, that first match there, Hoyle versus Min. Very interesting. We good to see if Hoyle can uh, defeat the uh, well, the challenge that is Min. And then we have Joe versus Declan, two very equal battlers. To uh, uh, yeah, they're 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 up there challenging. Joe's putting on the pressure, and then Jerky versus Rue, Rue who got that those miraculous wins, uh, but it turns out he's actually quite shit. So anyway, um, let's move on to the running order, and the running order of the video today will be. First match, Hall versus Min. Second, Ru, uh, Jerky versus Rue. Then we'll have Rick versus JJ, Louis versus Hollick, and finally, the Joe versus Declan match. Okay, so I don't think there's too much more to add apart from that. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Rick versus JJ. Will Rick be able to give or pose a threat, a challenge to JJ, or will he just... Uh, go over him like uh like nothing so that's the fixtures and the running order but before we get into that yes i finally decided to get around doing some tabloid again so let's have a look at the papers and see what the media has to say about uh this week and about the tour in general so first of all we've got a piece on jj and that reads as follows as another Poker Forum tour comes to a close, we're once again seeing the genius of JJ at work. Ever since the rebirth of competitive Pokemon at Poker Forum, he has been at the forefront of the competition, proving to be leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else with tactics and strategies no one in their right mind could ever come up with. Perhaps the Shed is a gateway to the 12th universe where JJ and Big AP have been tutored by advanced aliens, or maybe the new strain JJ has been trying has opened his third eye, or hell, maybe even Alex Jones popped down there and gave, uh, gave him some DMT, which helped inspire him to create new sets, like using Bide, Rage Power, Fungus. It would take a miracle for someone to step up now and steal the throne right at the last minute, but this season we've been no strangers to shock defeats. We witnessed Hoyle demolish Luke with a single Pokemon. We also saw Min succumb to the watery ways of Rick. Try and say that quickly. Although perhaps Min was distracted by Rick's astonishingly good looks. That's also possible. And let's not forget Rue, a player who only just discovered that Rock is weak to fighting. And that he somehow managed to win twice. So, I'd add the fact that Joe was also 6 0 by a Delhi Bird, but that's no surprise to anyone really. So, before I end this article here, I ask you all, who can stop the powerhouse that is Joshua Jarleth Copley? Okay, then, very nice piece there, interesting, by the Discord Times. So, next one, we've got the tryhards of the tour. So, any kind of competitive event has its share of tryhards. Those select people that want nothing more to win, uh, nothing more than to win because their life is an empty void of sadness and despair. But this season at Poker Forum, we've seen levels of tryharding that have eclipsed the like of Poker Rob quitting his job to get good at Pokemon. 
Take for example PokerForum's local data miner Luke Vegan Prick Jackson. He went through every single one of Declan's matches and calculated every single possible outcome with each potential team he'd use against him and calculated which one had the highest chance of winning. Not only that, he then went and broke the bro code of only bringing Scarf DD on to his match against Rue, all for a couple of points. Disgusting. But that's nothing, absolutely nothing compared to the scale of tryharding Joe went to. Luke's level of tryharding was like using Metal Claw Charmander against Brock, whereas Joe, well, uh, he went and caught six grass and water types, grinded them to level 50, and then went and fought Brock. This is the scale we're looking at. Joe was such a little tryhard that he scouted each and every formation used by his opponent, their most deadly mon and potential counters to it. And for what? Just to get 6 0 by a Grumpig. Ah, oh, yes, shame indeed. Alright then, next one. Uh, that last piece was by the Dilly Daily. Uh, and here we have one which is not related to Pokemon. Moving away from the sporting side of things, it was recently announced by PokerForum's very own record label, Lock Lemon Studios, that their star singer, Rue Ray Beckwith, will be releasing a new album and will be going on a worldwide tour. So far, the studio has released a few tracks from the new album, and the fans are mad over them. We've got hits such as So The Clit Suck Can't, so the clit suck can't Suck Us, the little fitty at the train station and trick or treat. Even the likes of Noel Gallagher's come out and praise the singer and songwriter saying, I always thought Rue was trying to be an Ed Sheeran clone, but after hearing these new bangers he's, re <laughs> he's released, I'm convinced he's got his own unique style and I'm eagerly awaiting to listen to the rest of the album. Rue's, Rue's tour will start in his own land, Scotland, with concerts in Edinburgh and Glasgow, and then see him travel to the States for more. When questioned why there wasn't a single concert in the UK, well, in England, Rue simply replied with, fuck off. There you go. And finally, this is a piece dedicated to all the special guests that we've had throughout the tour and what they're getting up to now. So, and finally, what happened to the special guests? Well, we got in touch with them recently to see what they're doing with themselves now and to see if the, expo uh, and to see if the exposure they got from Match of the Day has changed their lives in any way. There I am there. We found Kay round the back of the local as the dogging in the car park dressed in his £2,000 fursuit. After inquir inquiring what he had got up to since being the star of the first week of the tour, he informed us that thanks to Match of the Day, his Big Sugar novel got so much exposure that he's, that he's now a couple of grand well off. In fact, he let us have a feel of his new fursuit, which was made from real fox hair. Swanky stuff. Kay now spends most of his time writing more Big Sugar stories and dogging in any nearby supermarket or petrol station car park. Okay. Uh, it was no challenge finding Food King, seeing, his, seeing as he's quite active on social media. We sent him a message and he replied back with the following statement. After starring as the special guest of the week in the Poker Forum tour and smashing that Lil Wank Stain Joe, my YouTube video saw a massive increase in views and from the money I made from that, I'm, from that and my benefits, I was able to afford a deposit on a new house that I will soon be living in with my new girlfriend, Angela. There will be... There we will have lots of sex, both anal and vaginal, and have lots of kids. Good on you, Food King. Good on you. Uh, Big AP. We sent Big AP a DM, DM on Discord, and he said that this time, that his time as a special guest in the Poker Forum tour made him realise how shit a game Pokemon is, and that it's no surprise JJ beats everyone week in, week out. What with how trash the players all are. As I said, he's going to stick to uh, Civ from now on. And that's it. Uh, uh, Prickshit, it's been strength to strength for our beloved Prickshit, and his fortunes have certainly improved since his triumphant week as the guest battler in the tour. Using his glory and fame from his past victory in the tour and his utter humiliation of the participants when he was special guest, Prickshit has inspired all 1.3 billion in the nation of Punjab, and he has been elected Prime Minister of India. May he continue to bring faith and hope to all his subjects, and stay humble and moral in his reign. Uh, Hannah. Hannah didn't, Hannah didn't have time to talk to us as she was busy in her workshop making some jerk blocks for her next gym routine. They, they, I can't do the accent, I'm sorry. They say this is man's work, all this carpentry and woodwork lark, but I'll tell you now, I may as well be going out with a bloody woman because Dale is not interested in helping, in helping me, is he? All he cares about is sitting at his laptop memeing with the boys and playing his video games like a bloody weeb. 
They're all a bunch of incels, especially that Min Datu. I could lift them all with one arm. Bunch of puny incels. Now where's my protein shake? Dale, get back into the kitchen and make my dinner. <laughs> um... Poker Rob. Poker Rob was found with all his personal belongings living in a cardboard box outside the camp. No, it seems that after his thrashing at the hands of the rest of Poker Forum, his sponsor decided to take him off the books and look for someone who could bring some actual talent to their esports team. Some rumors say he molested the Barcelona chairman's seven-year-old son, but the but the board refused to comment on it. Who knows what lies ahead for Poker Rob? Shark Tamer. We took to the sea but failed to find Shark Tamer. So we went. So we sent Seb K a message and he told us that Shark Tamer had swum back to the Japanese coast where he can indulge in his Asian fetish and spy on all the cute Japanese girls from, a par from afar. You do you, Shark Tamer. Silver. Silver didn't, o Silver didn't even open the messages we sent him on Twitter but thanks to still having him added as a friend on Steam for some reason, we were able to see that he had been playing some weep hentai game non-stop for 48 hours. If only we knew his real identity so we could send someone around his house to put a bullet through his head and rid the world of one more leech. And finally, Rathi. As for this week's special guest, Rathi, they decided to stick with their preferred Pokemon game, the TCG. But according to one of our closest sources, <coughs> Hoyle, <coughs> they're not very good at that either. In their spare time, they browse Twitter looking for people to cancel. So there you have it. And speaking of Rathi, that is, like I just said, this week's special guest. So without further ado, let's jump right in and have a look at the team Rathi used this week. So uh, yeah, we've got Rathi the Jinx. That's a lead with Focus Ash and uh, has Fake Out, Focus Blast, Ice Beam and Psychic. Then we've got Rio, uh, the Mr. Mine with Choice Specs. And yeah, just Trick, Psychic, Dazzling Gleam and Shadow Ball. Post-Op, the Gardevoir, uh, Mega Gardevoir with Healing Wish, Psyshock, Moonblast, Hidden Power. Then we've got Rathi Dragon, that's a little nod to the 9.9 .9 comics to those of you who know it. Which is just a standard Stealth Rock Swords on Stone Age Earthquake set. Pre-Op, Meloetta with Normalium Z for that Z Celebrate boost. Uh, with Celebrate obviously, Psychic, Focus Blast and Hyper Voice. Then we've got, I'm a lady, the Serena with Meadow Plate. And that's uh, got Rapid Spin, Power Whip, Knockoff, and High Jump Kick. So that's the team Rathi brought this week. We'll see how that team did at the end of the video and show her results. And yeah, okay, I, I believe that's it. That's the, uh, the tabloid stuff over and done with. So I believe we can move on. Okay then, let's get this first match underway. We've got Hoyle versus Min. So let's start off with the uh, home team. That's Hoyle. And uh, Hoyle's gone for a very, very offensive lineup this week. Probably the most offensive one he's gone for yet. As you can see, no defenders, just a 0-2-1-3. Got the two um, supporting midfielders. Uh, with Azelf, Inner Zelf and Excadrill. Zelf there as the uh, lead to set up Stealth Rocks. Excadrill as the uh, um, spinner and uh, support. And then you've got Zerora as the Volt Switcher to come in, Volt Switch out, scout, uh, any other, scout any other Pokemon. And then the front three of Mega Swampert, Superior and Chandelure. We all know how dangerous Hoyle Chandler can be because um, it uh, basically 6 nilled Luke's team a few weeks ago. So definitely a player to keep your eye on. So Piri obviously with the contrary ability can easily set up a sweep. And finally Mega Swampert is just a beast anyway. So that is Hoyle's lineup. Let's, uh, let's move on to Min's. So, once again, Min going with the extremely offensive 006 lineup with a, an extremely cute team again. He's got um, Ampharos, the Ansi, Delibird, Rumpig, Cloyster, and uh, oh, yeah, the Go Luck, as you can see. I, I, shrunk the, uh, I shrunk the sprite. I hope you're, you're happy about that. You know, can fit all six uh, Mon there. So, yeah, no complaints, hopefully. <laughs> Um, okay, anything to add? No, not really, because, yeah, uh, we all know what these Pokemon do. Gek has stuck with them now 
for a good few weeks, probably half the tour, so nothing much to add. So may as well just get straight into the match. All right then, so we've had the lineups. Let's get started. First match of the day, and um, interested to see how the uh, match turns out. So, um, Gek's going to start off with the Grumpig. Uh, Hoyle is going to just set, set up the Stealth Rocks. Switch out then after taking the Shadow Ball to his Swampert. That's going to take the uh, Shadow Ball easily. Swampert's going to go for a Toxic, whilst Grumpig just stays in and uh, starts dealing some damage. Waterfall's not going to kill it, and neither is Psychic. It's going to leave it with just 1% HP. That was, um, yeah, really unfortunate. Um, Hall then switches out to the Excadrill, and uh, Grumpig faints. Uh, so, yeah. In comes the Golurk, which goes for a Poltergeist, and that's going to easily take out the Zelf. Um, Hall then switches in the Serpira, which somehow doesn't kill, doesn't kill with the um, with the Leaf Storm, and yeah, um, Min's going to be able to revenge kill with the uh, Poltergeist. Damn, I was did not see that coming at all. So yeah, Swampert's going to go for the uh, Toxic, whilst um, Min shell smashes Mrs. Moynihan's Vag. And uh, yeah, just takes one Icicle Spear to knock it out. In comes Joe DeFerry, the Zero Aura, and that's also going to die to the Icicle Spear. And I think I think this is it for Hoyle, because I can't see any way he's going to come back from this. Rock Blast is going to wreck his uh, famous Chandelure, and um, Ice Spear is going to cut through that Excadrill like the um, Bollard cutting through Dirk's wing mirror. Yes. So there you have it. Cute Mons win again. Uh, who needs OU Mon when you can just play Delibird, Ampharos and Grumpig? That's it. That's all it takes to win. Alright then. So that's the first match out of the way. Let's move on to the second match and that's Jerky versus Rue. Jerky who is... Um, Yep, we're winless. Well, no one's surprised about that so far. We all know just how bad um, his record has been. Though, I wonder if today that can change. Um, I'll quickly go over his uh, Bollard team, although it's very similar to the, to the ones he usually runs. So he's got the Bronzong as the sole centre-back, Heatran as the more defensive midfielder, and then his four big Bollard boys in Cobalion, Scizor, Melmetal and Kling Clang. So those um yeah, those are his key players. Uh nothing really much more to add. So let's move on to uh Rue's team. So Rue has uh changed thing up changed changed things up a little bit. Gone for the one one three one with Aegis Lass as the uh defender. A bomber snow in um, the middle of the park as the supporting midfielder and then Beware, Zoroark, and um, Barascuda as the attacking midfielders. Beware and Barascuda as the wingers. Zoroark as the attacking midfielders, just playing behind the big target man, Dragonite. who will be looking to boost up with the uh, Dragon Dance and get some kills. So, those are the lineups. Let's jump right into the match. Okay then, next up we've got Rue versus Jerk, and what are my eyes seeing? Is that a team of not fully evolved Pokemon? What is Rue thinking? There's there's no way that Rue's unevolved team can actually beat Jerk. And um, he can't be playing the Pedo card because Jerk has lost his Pedo status. So I don't know what his intentions are with this team. So let's get right in it. I'm interested, curious to see what uh, what it is. So in comes uh, Snova, little Timmy. That's going to use Hidden Power Ground. Not going to kill the uh, Bronzong because it's got Levitate. And uh, not that it matters because Bronzong explodes all over it. Um, in comes the um, Aracuda. That U turns out to Dratini, which is going to just die from that double iron bash. And then <coughs> in comes 
the Lil Terry again goes for the Aqua Jet. That's not going to do shit all to the uh, Kling Clang. And um, Jerk's going to take his turn to boost up with the Shift Gear. But oh my god, the close combat one shot in the Mel Metal. I did not expect Aracuda to have enough attack to do that, even with a close combat. Uh, yeah, in comes the Cobalion, the Sewage Mon. Swords Dance is up. And yeah. Close combat's not going to one-shot that, and he's going to kill it with the Sacred Sword. Um, in comes, what's that called, Hone Edge, and that's going to take the Iron Head really well, and Sacred Sword's going to sh one-shot that, well, not one-shot it, but kill it. Not that it matters, because in comes Heatran, and Eruption's going to wreck that. And then, what? what is going on here? I'm sorry, I cannot kill the little kid bear. I admire your commitment to sportsmanship, Jerk, but also I'm sad. I'm sorry, brother. If a cute one is played, it, I cannot kill it. It is the way. Good game, friend. Nice team. I shall send the replay to our friend Omega Pit. So there you have it. Jerk forfeit in the match, losing his chance at uh, earning at least one win in this tour. Um, and all for the sake of sportsmanship, for, you know, following his rule of not killing... Uh, cute mon which is admirable admirable and all but um if the matches are going to last this long i'm not going to have any uh footage for a one hour match of the day um so yeah let's move on to the next one okay then next up we've got rick versus jj the powerhouse jj himself taking on little old rick with his uh sexy rain dance team so let's see how Rick does against um, the, the ever so strong JJ. Um, I'll start off with Rick's lineup, although it'll be very quick because it's the same lineup he played last week. So we've got the 1 2 3, uh, Ferrothorn as the centre back, uh, Crowback, Crowbat, and Polytoad in the middle, supporting the attackers, um, and Ferrothorn if need be. And then you've got the big poacher up front which is uh dragapult then you've got uh, swampert and ludicolo uh flanking him uh and looking to abuse the the rain and their swift swim ability so next up uh i'm not going to give you a lineup of jj's team uh i was gonna say a witty phrase but the reason is I really can't be asked doing his formation because uh, I just want to get this video out, out now. So yeah, uh, let's jump right into the match. Okay then, so here we have it. The exclusive footage of Rick versus, versus JJ. Um, and it looks to me, it looks to me that JJ accidentally brought a Gen 4 OU team to a Gen 8 National Dex battle. What a uh, mistake that was, but never mind. Let's see how that match um, starts. So JJ leading with the Clefable, switching out straight away to his Metagross, clearly three moves ahead of Rick, predicting his switch into Ferrothorn. He then uses his turn to set up Stealth Rock with Metagross whilst uh, switching out to the Clefable. Um, that uses Flamethrower on the Polito, doesn't get the burn and yeah, Clefable just goes for the Grass Knot to see how much damage that does. In comes the Ludicolo, which then takes a huge 70% from the uh, Moonblast. And then, yeah, play, uh, Clefable survives the Scald. And why are you running Scald? Why wouldn't you run Surf or Hydro Pump? Or whatever. Um, yeah, then eventually uh, dies. Uh, or is going to die from being a Switch in. So... Yeah, in comes the motherfucking stall, which is um, Ferrothorn. Uh, predicting the fire move, JJ goes for the Moonblast, but no, Rick uh, clearly predicted that as well, and just goes for the Power Whip, or was just confident that the uh, Flamethrower wouldn't kill. So yeah, at this point, uh, looking at JJ's team, I'm not sure if there's much he can really do. Uh, JJ exploding all over the Ferroform, but that used Protect there. Uh, so, yeah, not really much he can do. He's just got to go for another Explode again there. Just 
building up damage, I, I'm guessing. Uh, Ferrothor not missing once with that uh, Leech Seed, by the way. Clearly, uh, clearly data mining the accuracy uh, stats in the game. Um, so after a Calm Mind, Ice Beam does absolutely shit all. So it looks like JJ's definitely on the back foot here. He's going to need uh, a lot of luck to pull this one out of the bag. Because, uh, yeah, that Ferrothorn is really stalling out the... Um, Stalling out his team. I guess that's uh, what you get if you don't pack more fire moves. So in comes the Jirachi now. That's also going to start Calm Minding. And uh, once again, just setting up the Leech Seed. Probably the most boring match of the uh, whole season, I I think, you know. Uh, yeah, really, really boring match. Uh, quite disappointing, actually. But uh, there you go. So, um, Psychic's going to kill the Dragapult. Uh, in comes Ferrothorn. That's just going to protect as usual. Take the Psychic. And then finally, yeah, tries to protect again, but that stall's not going to work. But, uh, yeah, Jirachi faints to the Stealth Rock. Uh, so in comes the final Mon. That is uh, JJ and Oh no, what has happened? The uh, the match has cut out, but our news sources that were there on the day uh, can tell us that JJ Tyranitar did manage to um, to kill the Ferrothorn with a Fire Punch, uh, then crit the Swampert with a, a critical hit Crunch, and then kill it kill the Politoed and Crobat with his Stone Edge. So there you go, JJ's Tyranitar really pulling it out of the bag for um, for for JJ and that just goes to show that JJ truly is unbeatable, the, uh, the king of the tour so far. So yeah, Rick tried, he put in a good effort but it was not enough to take out JJ. Okay then, and now we got the penultimate match of the day, and that's uh, Louis versus Holick. So let's start off with the home team lineup. Um, Louis with the not so solid uh, win rate at the moment. I was hopeful that after that win, he got his first win, he'd start to go on a little run, but it wasn't meant to be. Hopefully he can get at least one more victory today just to end on a high. And today he's gone for an extremely defensive lineup. He's gone for a 4-1-1. And that's uh, with the Fair of Thorn, Alolan Muck, um, Vaporeon and Zapdos as the back four. With Aegislash as a more a, more of an attacking midfielder, deep line playmaker. And then his big Melmetal up front as the target man to come in and do the damage. So, um, yeah, that's Louis' lineup, sticking with his more defensive formations. Let's move on to Holick. So Holick has gone for a very balanced 2-2-2, two, 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 stealing uh, Declan's formation there, with the um, Jelly Scent and Heatran as the two centre-backs, with... Rillaboom and Manectric as uh, more attacking midfielders. You've got Rillaboom as uh, a yeah, deep line playmaker. Manectric then playing behind the two um, poachers, which are Volcarona and uh, Spex Sylveon. So, uh, yeah, it's to be interesting to see how this match plays out. So, yeah, we've had the lineups. Let's get into that match. All right then, penultimate match of the day, uh, Louis versus Luke. One very defensive team and the other balanced, so um, this might um, <laughs> make the video last a bit longer, seeing as the first two matches were very, very <laughs> short. So let's jump right into that. Uh, Louis starting with Fer Ferrothorn as usual, and <laughs> once again it got one-shotted by... A Pokemon with a fire move as a lead. So, yeah. Um, in comes... Um, uh, what's that? Rillaboom. That gets toxic by the Vaporeon. And 
Uh, Louis gonna no yeah Louis gonna switch out to his mark that takes the wood hammer quite nicely actually, um, and I'm guessing yeah Louis gonna switch out uh, no Louis gonna switch out Louis predicts that goes for the pursuit gets some a nice chunk of damage done to that, whilst um, the Heatran takes its turn to set up Stealth Rocks and um, Louis switches in the Vaporeon. Louis then goes for a wish and sends in the Alola Muck, which takes the Hyper Voice. Um, yeah, f well, well, only took forty percent there, so that's all right. And then uses Poison Jab against the Manectric, and uh, that gets poisoned. Uh, attention to that poison, not uh, badly poisoned, just regular poisoned. Um, he then switches out. I don't know why he switched out there. He could have just stayed in with the uh, with the Mark instead of bringing in a Zapdos because now he's lost his Zapdos for no reason. That the Mark could have taken the the Thunderbolt and then revenge killed, but I don't know. He decided to stay in, and uh, and as a result, lost that Zapdos. So I think things could have been a bit different had he have stayed in. But never mind. Uh, there's no going back now. Um. Yeah, shit happened, and now we're at Jelly Scent versus Jelly Scent and Vaporeon. The Vaporeon is burnt. Um, yeah, Vaporeon tries to toxic the Heatran. That's not gonna work. And uh, Louis then doubles. Uh, Luke then double switches. Why did they both have to have L as their first letter as the first name? Anyway, um, yeah, Louis finally toxics the v Vaporeon, and Luke tries to start setting up with Quiver Dance. But even with one Quiver Dance, Scald still doing 46%. That's a huge amount of damage. Um, and Bug Bar's doing just about 60%. And uh, yeah, that, that wasn't much at all, really. Quite the uh, easy kill. So Luke switches in Manectric. Louis protects. And um, yeah. And then uh, the Manectric, Manectric dies to poison because obviously it's poison, not. Uh, badly poison, so that does 12 to 13 percent each turn. Um, Louis then sends in the Mel Metal, goes for an earthquake. I'm guessing he predicted the double eye, like he predicted Luke to expect the double iron bash and switch in Heatran, but no, Luke's data mind, data mind, Louis's mind, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the muck. Knocks off the Heatran's leftovers, goes for a Shadow Sneak just to get a little bit more damage onto that. But it's not going to be enough. Um, Louis then switches in Melmetal, but I think that's it now. There's no way his Pokemon are going to be able to um, uh, take out this Heatran. But hold on, no, I'm wrong. The uh, Aegislas going for close combat and Shadow Claw not killing... And Z move, Z move jelly scent. Why would you run a Z move jelly scent on a defensive wall? Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, three 0 win to Luke. Very uh, well. I don't want to say stalling match. We've had longer. Twenty seven turns. That's not too bad. That's like just long enough. Long enough. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for your excellent sportsmanship and uh, the effort you put in. So. Um, yeah, good games. Let's move on to the next match. Okay then, and here we have it. The final match of the day. Joe versus Declan. Uh, let's get right in there, check out those formations, and see what happens between these two battlers. So, we'll start off with the home team. That's Joe. So, Joe's, um... Final record isn't looking too bad with those five wins and three losses. He'll be looking to improve that win record today. And um, changing up the team from the last two weeks, uh, he swapped out the rain team for the sunny day team, which was the team that got him his first win. Let's not forget that. So as you can see, a 1-3-2 with Torkoal as the sole centre-back. And then we've got uh, Infernape, Charizard and Rillaboom in the middle. Uh, Infernape and Rillaboom as the wingers who will be um, coming in and out, you know, with U-turn and uh, help setting up the the other 
poachers which are Venusaur and Manaphy so you might be surprised to see Manaphy there but that's just uh, simply as a check for a lot of the sunny day team's weaknesses and for um, to abuse its Walterium Z if Sun isn't up and uh, abuse that tail glow as well and try to go for a late game sweep so and then you got Venusaur who I don't need to explain what Venusaur does it's a great uh, sunny day attacker uh, so yeah that's Joe's lineup let's have a look at Declan's so a very very surprising lineup here um, so he's gone for the hail team um, and yeah so a hail team versus sunny day team that's gonna be a very interesting match Min is probably uh, slitting his wrists right now but uh, there you go never mind uh, Declan with the 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two formation Ryu Nicholas as the sole center back as well with Obama Snow and, mid and Heatran as the more defensive midfielders uh, not so much Wolves uh, but definitely uh, like supporting midfielders and pushing that attack Kurem as the attacking midfielder and then finally Sandslash and uh, Cloyster as the two target men Sandslash will be looking to sell with Swords Dance and use its what's it called Iceum? Iceum Z? I don't know um, Iceum Z and then if that fails it'll fall back on Cloyster with Shell Smash who we've already seen today is a very potent threat a very dangerous uh, Pokemon if you're not prepared for it so there you have it those are the two lineups let's get right into that match and see how our final match of the day ends okay then so here we have it last match sunny day team versus a hail team let's get right in there let's uh, switch sides so yeah uh Declan's gonna start with the heatran joe's gonna lead with infernape and uh, he's going to U-turn out, bring in the Charizard whilst Declan sets up Stealth Rock, which is not good. Charizard goes for the Focus Blast, and that misses. And then Joe Mega Evolves the Charizard into Charizard Y, goes for the Flamethrower, which does a nice 53%. Not going to go for the over prediction so early on, so he sticks with the Flamethrower. Declan is clearly just well, predicting those attacks. Focus Blast misses once again, which is a bit of a pain because that extra damage as little as it would have been would have been useful so yeah never mind um doe goes for the flamethrower not bothering to go for a roost again and sun goes down so uh he then sends in the rilla boom goes for the u-turn into the bomber snow which almost gets one shotted by that um left with a mere three percent but then a bit more after the uh grassy terrain uh, heal so um, yeah Joe goes for the rapid spin uh, spins away those rocks and then sends in Rillaboom once again uh, he's then going to U-turn out whilst Declan predicts the the U-turn um, and then goes to Manaphy so um, Joe goes for the Waterium the Z power the Hydro Vortex and even yeah the um, the sun obviously ruining that, which he knew, of course, but he was hopeful that the max, well, not max special attacks, but uh, the 252 special attacks would have um, been enough, but it wasn't. So he lost the Manaphy in process, but that was revenge killed by Infernape. So uh, in comes the Reuniculus again, uh, and that goes for all the Wood Hammer this time, and that's going to one shot it. So, yeah, Banded Rillaboom is a beast. That's a very, very strong mon indeed. So, Declan sends in Curem now. That goes for a sub, whilst Joe switches out to his Torkoal. Um, Declan goes for a Freeze Dry, and that does a mere 25%, whilst uh, Joe breaks the substitute with a Lava Plume. Uh, yeah, Dex goes for another sub, whilst uh, Joe just wears that Curem down. Uh, eventually, I believe, yeah, Dex switches out, goes to the Obama Snow, and uh, Joe just kills that with the Lava Plume. Um, in comes the Sand Slash. That's a Lowland Sand Slash, so it's a nice Steel type. Joe just carries on, sticks to his Torkoal, and abuses the uh, Lava Plume, because there's no point in uh, 
well, no point switching out or anything. So yeah, that goes for the earthquake. Uh, While Joe sets up Stealth Rock just to make sure, uh, you know, just to get that extra added damage. Switch out to switches out to the Venusaur and then back into the Torkoal just to set up the Drought. Whilst Declan misses with the Icicle Crash, not that it's an important miss uh, ultimately because it wouldn't have made any difference seeing as uh, he's going to be able to kill now with the Earthquake anyway. So yeah, that's uh, nothing. But with the Sun up now and Venusaur being able to use that Weather Ball, it's uh, not looking good for Declan, especially now that Joe's got rocks up and uh, yeah, Weather Ball's just going to wreck the Curum as well. And finally, uh, against the Cloister, Giga Drain is going to one-shot that. So it looked a bit tough at the beginning, but Joe finally pulls through with his Sunny Day team and uh, gets the 3-0 win. So, yeah, good games. Very, very interesting match, very close. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's it. That is the end. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is that. Um, we've gone through all the matches today. So all that's left is to have a look at the final standings of the league and see how it all finished up. So let's have a look at the table. This is the pre style point table. So we've got JJ with that impressive... Uh, flawless record with the nine wins zero losses um so yeah the full 18 points there we've got luke in the second place with his six wins uh three losses two style points so that leaves him on 14 joe with well joe yeah joe and me with both both with six wins and three losses uh joe with just the one style point min with four but then losing three because he let Poker Rob kill uh, three of his mon, so that's 13. Then we've got Declan Rick with five wins and four losses and just the one style point, leaving them on 11. And then Hoyle, Rue, and Louie uh, down at the bottom with Jerk in the red, the complete, the antithesis, 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 antithesis. This is yeah, of uh, JJ with zero wins and nine losses. So there you have it. But this isn't the final standings. This is just the regular points. Uh, we've not taken into account the final style points um, that Dill is going to add now. So let's have a look. First of all, one style point to Jerk, Joe, Declan, Rick, Rue, Louis, Hall and Luke for being good sports. Oof, okay. Plus nine style points to Rue for each of his brilliant Match of the Day covers. Yeah, that's fair. Plus one style point to Joe for Match of the Day. That's fair. One style point for each time Jerk stuck to his guns and picked a KFC bullet pack. Plus 20. Holy shit. Um... Minus one style point for each week, JJ had to get an activity win, or as I have only recently found out, had Min Datu ghost his match for him. Oh shit, that is a, that's a shocker that one. I can't believe that's uh, that's leaked. I wonder who who found that out. Um, minus four style points for Min giving me sass in the chat every week because he thinks his his entire toy is rigged against him. Plus five style points for Louis. Uh, for kicking off week one and nearly quitting the entire tour, but then changing his mind and playing the rest of his matches. Uh, excellent. And so, without further ado, I give you the final standings of the Poker Forum Tour Season 3. So this is it, ladies and good gents. This is going to reveal who the real winner of the Poker Forum Season 3 Tour is. Yes, take me away. And there you have it. It's Jerk. Jerk with the impressive zero wins, uh, nine losses, 21 style points in the end, giving him 21 in total. Rue second with 17. Um, Luke and Joe with 15. And then down at the bottom, we've got Min and JJ on eight. Just the eight points. JJ from top all the way down to bottom. Um, shocking, really. I can't believe um, he actually allowed Min Ghost for him. That's uh, 
Rather disappointing, that is. Rather disappointing indeed. So, there you have it. That's the final standings, but that's not the end. Oh, no, no, no. We do have a uh, a playoff now. Yeah, so there you go. But wait, there is more. It is time to play the playoffs to determine the winner of the winners who won when... Who won... Who then gets to play Jerk in the grand final. Oh, okay. So, um... We've got Joe versus Hoyle, Luke versus Louis on one side, Rue versus Dill, and Declan versus Rick on the other. That's not going to be included in today's video though. But um, here is the brackets. As you can see, I have replaced Min Daddy because he is unsportsman and a cheat. Nothing corrupt or shady has happened here. Min, fuck you. He's going to take his talents to Pokemon World. I'm not afraid of you, I can beat you any day of any given week except for Tuesday, and that's when Hannah makes me go in the gym. Uh, so, it's all kicking off between Dill and Min. And I believe they're going to fight it out. They're going to fight it out, and their position, or Dill's place in the playoffs, will be determined by a Gen 4 OU match. So, um... Yeah. Um, well, I'll add, I'll add that match to the to the next video as well. So, there you have it. Um, that's the final tour standings. We've got the playoffs next. That won't be as long as most videos. I'm going to leave you now with the final stinks, stonks, and <laughs> I still can't remember the full name. Hold on, stinks, stonks, and whatever um that i'm gonna leave you with that by our very own mr charisma and chairman of uh exo ball life and then i'm gonna leave you with people's opinions of the tour i asked you all to send in a voice clip saying what are your top five moments of the tour and a few of you uh, well, I say a few of you, it was just oil, but there you go. Um, sent in your replies, and uh, we'll have that to see us off. And then, there, that will be the end of Match of the Day. So, I uh, bid you all farewell. Thanks for watching. I'm Omega Pit, and see you all later. What is up, people? It's your boy Mini Dizzle here, aka Mr. Charisma. The Poker Forum Tour has reached its final stages, and what a season it's been. My job here today is to give you an overview of the tour as a whole, highlighting the absolute best stonks throughout the tour, and of course the biggest stinks of the whole season so far. Hopefully, you'll have followed all my tips to date so far, and have enough Hoyle coin for 50 nights with Mrs Moynihan. So let's get right into it, and remember, the following are the biggest stonks of the entire season so far. So coming at number 5, we have Declan, about to become a father. Completely unrelated to the tour, but related entirely to one of its most beloved participants. Word on the street is that our very own resident teapot is about to become a father. The team here at the Pokeforum stock market wishes him the best for his incoming life as a father, and what a great next chapter in your life you have coming up. We think you're going to absolutely smash it. Sliding at number 4 we have Rue's music career. As I obviously predicted correctly last episode, Rue's anthems have now become the best part of Match of the Day, aside from this segment of course. Word on the street is that Rue has signed an earth-shattering record contract and apparently has even brought Michael Jackson out of retirement to feature on his debut single. I've heard the debut single is going to be about Joe and the history of PokemonWorld.co.uk, so Michael Jackson is of course a very fitting choice to have alongside him. Sliding at number 3, continuing our trend of showing gratitude where it's due, we have Dale Jacob. The team here at Stonks, Stinks and Thinks would like to extend a massive congratulations to our very own Dill, Dale Jacob Jacob for an amazing tour season, the best season we've ever had by far. Of course, we sympathise for the fact that his relationship with Hannah has gone down the shitter because of the tour, but sacrifices must be made in life sometimes. Hannah reached out to me privately, I can reveal, and told me that the tipping point for her to leave Dale was when she caught him in bed at 3am furiously drawing on his tablet because Hoyle threatened to KMS if he didn't get his new cards there and then. Fuck you Hoyle. Fuck. You. Rolling in at number 2 on our list, we have Cute Mons. Look, let's just get one thing clear in life. Paris Fashion Week. Rue posting his clothing fit of the day in the Discord. Food King wearing his 6 extra large sized England t-shirt, which is effectively a crop top. 
These things are all stylish of course, but you know what the ultimate style flex is? Using Ampharos, Delibird and Grumpig in a tour as competitive as this and coming out on top. Mr Charisma, the greatest battler in the tour, went an incredible 4 wins and 1 loss with his team of coupons, the highlight of which being when he defeated Joe and Hoyle who were using their standard tryhard teams. More on those teams later, but let's take a moment to congratulate Mr Charisma for being the ultimate styler of the tour. How does he do it? And finally at number 1 on our list, and bear in mind this is the number 1 best performing stonk of the entire season so far, we have... Jerk. I called it. I told you. Last edition, I had Jerk number 1 on my list of stonks to buy, and the bollard boy has only gone and won the regular season of the tour. Sticking to his guns and only buying the KFC bollard packs, a well deserved heap of style points was showered on Jerk and he shot up to number 1 on the league's table. It wasn't even close. Thank you Jerk for teaching me about loyalty, sticking to your morals and overall just showing me what it means to be a real man. I appreciate it always and congratulations on your win. And next, we have the biggest stinks of the season so far. These were the absolute worst performing stonks of the season, so bad that they deserve to be highlighted and shamed here in the end of the season segment. Coming in at number 5 of our stinks for the entire season, we have Joe Stephen Moynihan. Actions speak louder than words, and I can only say so much here, so instead, may I refer you to the past match of the days, where Joe tryharded, counter-teamed all of his opponents and still lost, and worst of all, he has more salt than the entire nation of Bolivia. Completely unacceptable. And bumbling in at number 4, on a somewhat related topic, we have counter-teaming and tryharding. I alluded to this in my last entry, but this deserves its own entry entirely. Allegations of counter-teaming and tryharding were rife in this tour, but apparently, some people in the tour couldn't grasp that they were just beat because they were shit, rather than their opponents scouting them. And on the other hand, there was serious tryharding going on by a couple of battlers, data mining, watching past match of the day replays, and some participants even demanded Mr Charisma build their teams for them. It's just shocking really, it's just shocking. Coming in at number 3 of the stinks, we have the pause button. One small thing that ruined the whole fucking video, the pause button proved to be a powerful force, ruining a whole episode of Batch of the Day. Rumour has it that Joe is still prying to trust the fucking pause button. You have got to be kidding me! Winning the Wooden Spoon Award and coming at number 2 on our list, we have JJ Copley. Who would have thought the two-time tour winner, undefeated this season, JJ stood firmly at the top of the table until a shocking scandal was revealed. Mr Charisma allegedly ghosted a match for JJ, one of his victories. Why JJ had to get someone as shit as Mr Charisma to ghost for him I'm still not sure, but he was deducted all of his points for such an egregious scandal. It's all downhill here for JJ, and rumour has it that Big AP is preparing to bury JJ's disgraced body under the shed as a punishment. And coming in miserably at number one, and remember ladies and gentlemen, this is the absolute biggest stink in the entire season so far. At number one, we have rain and weather teams. Look, I'm going to be real with you here, because maybe Mr Charisma wasn't clear enough about this the last time I spoke to you, so just listen to me now and give me your full attention. I know people who use weather teams are brain dead, so I'll try to speak slower and clearer. If you have ever used a weather team in this tour, sincerely, get good. Your trash, get good, and stop using them as a crutch for your shitness. Get the shit out of a beautiful game, and sincerely, fuck you if you've been using one. And that's it for today. I've been Mr Charisma, your host of Stonks, Stinks and Thinks, and it's been an absolute pleasure hosting the segment for you for the past several weeks. Enjoy the rest of the season, sit back, grab some popcorn, and there's some fireworks about to fly in the playoffs, I assure you. Thank you for listening, love all of you, mashallah. The top five moments of the third Pokeforum tour as determined by the whole. First up in number five is when Luke datamined match of the day by uh, inducing a rage in the live commentary. Um, there were some fun lines there said by both sides, actually. Fuck you, you prick, fucking data mining cunt. Why don't you go choke on a fucking broccoli piece, wanker? But moving swiftly on to number four, uh, Min's moment of cuteness when he swept Joe with cute mons such as Daily Bird, Grumpig, and Ampharos. Third place is back when Dill was running the tour. 
and did not bring it into disrepute as Joe has done. And it was a very fun format, you know, unique style of tour. So that was that was a nice moment. Uh, number two is obviously JJ getting a clean sweep again and encapsulated in his statement of attempt in week one where he uh, dispatched Joe very easily. And number one is obviously just going to be Rick being a sexy bastard. A long as fucking time ago in a town called Tottenham There was a whole family, they were called the Moynihan's yeah, there was a black sheep with a clean sock in his hands. His name was Joseph Stephen, he refused to step in line. A vision he did see it, fucking battling all the time. He made a tasty channel, all the matches did a line. Oh, the dragon's balls are blazing as I stepped into his cave. Then I sliced his fucking cockles with a pink and fairy blade. To his eye, who fucked the dragon, fuck the light, say fuck the loo. And if you try to fuck with me, then I shall fuck you too. Gotta get it on in the party zone. Got a dragon dance with my skull. 